We had a piece by a colleague, Jesse Westbrook, earlier this week on the Bloomberg talking about uh, the appointment of uh, Jay Clayton to be the nominee for the SEC chairman. And the, re the report was that when Mr. Clayton sat down with Mr. Trump for his interview, the entire discussion, the entire discussion was about the role of the SEC in IPOs. Is this a real problem? I, th I think it is, and I'm glad that they're focusing on that. I think Jay is going to be a great guy to uh, help lead uh, this effort. But if you look at, say, 20 years ago, um, IPOs were about seven, eight hundred um, a year uh, as they were coming out. That was the heyday of the IPO. If you look over the last few years, and especially since Sarbanes-Oxley uh, was uh, enacted back in 2002, IPO, the number of IPOs have plummeted per year. Last year maybe a little bit more than 100. And so there are so many, uh, if you look at the number of public companies that are listed uh, today in the United States, it's half of what it was back in 1996, 20 years ago. So all of that points to, you know, why is all this happening in, the, in our capital markets? So f many fewer companies, so many companies like Uber, for example, that doesn't even feel the need to go public. It's because of, one, is the cost of regulation, and two, other things like the fear of litigation and that sort of thing. So basically, the costs of going public don't out outweigh the benefits, and the private markets now are so <coughs> robust that right. people don't really need to tap into the public markets. Right. There's been at least one other development, though, Mr. Atkins, since 1996, which has been the huge development of venture capital money. So that, uh, you mentioned Uber, for example. These people have access to a lot of capital they didn't have back in 96. Isn't that a possible explanation for the change in IPOs? Oh, no, no question about it, uh, and that there is a lot of private money out there um, that is willing to invest. But if you look at the way that uh, companies um, have developed, if, uh, compare, say, Apple or Microsoft to some of the more recent uh, companies that uh, went public uh, here in the last uh, couple of years, starting with Google and going on, uh, if you look at the pop, so-called, that the, that the insiders got uh, versus the investors in the IPOs, it was much more heavily weighted towards investors in the IPOs back in the early days, back in the 80s and the 90s. Today, there's a very tiny little sliver of pop that goes to the investors in the IPOs. And so what that means, basically, is most of the insiders, the early investors, uh, get the uh, cruel of the, uh, of the gains um, of the company. And basically, the IPO becomes an, uh, an exit strategy. And so that just does not indicate necessarily a good uh, a healthy capital market, at least not one that we had that really was an engineer of a lot of our growth in the U.S. And I know you would agree that one of the hallmarks of a good, health, healthy capital market is protection of investors for investing in things they don't know about. In that same piece by Mr. Westbrook on the Bloomberg, it says that investors are somewhat ambivalent about cutting back on the regulations, the disclosure is required for IPOs. As a former SEC commissioner, with the SEC's mandate to protect investors, are you at all concerned that we could be jeopardizing investors. Well, I think there's always a cost and a benefit. And when you talk about investors, investors are not monolithic, okay? There are some investors who are much more politically um, active, I would call them, than other folks who are much more economically driven. If you look at, I dare you to read through some of the disclosure forms for uh, <laughs> prospectuses and some mergers and things like that, it's turgid, it lasts for hundreds of pages, and nobody uh, really weighs, um, uh, gets wades through all of that. And so if you look at some of the things in Dodd-Frank, for example, like the conflict minerals provision and other things, the pay ratio, these are things that were politically motivated that do not deal with material information for shareholders. We have to get back to what is the, you know, the basis of our disclosure mm -hmm. regime, and that's giving investors meaningful material information so that they can make a decision mm -hmm. to buy, right. hold, or sell their security. And, and, and finally, Paul, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about a possible role for you in the new administration. I know you've been talked about, for example, for the vice chair position of the Fed. There were reports that you declined that. Are you out of the running now for some role in the Trump administration? Uh, you know, I, I really like what I'm doing now. It's it's uh, a great spot. I'm working with great people, have uh, great clients and all of that. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to help uh, where I can. But, uh, you know, I think there are other people who can probably uh, do these jobs uh, and uh, very competently. And that, that job at the Fed is extremely important uh, for many reasons. But, uh, you know, we I, I know that they I'm, have confidence that President Trump can find somebody good for it.